Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Martin, and right now I'm getting blasted by blue light. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle Martin, and in today's video, we're gonna be checking out some small six by eight inch paintings that I've been working on in the past week. And I'm also gonna be talking about how I use photo reference when I'm painting in the studio. If you're a fan of my channel last year, you can remember that around this time, I offered some holiday boxes for sale on my web store. Each of my holiday boxes included a framed six by eight inch painting, four holiday greeting cards, just a folded card with envelopes, and also a sticker pack. And well, it's that time of year again, and I'm gonna be offering some, some of these same kind of holiday boxes on my web store starting around Thanksgiving time. If you are interested in, in being notified when those boxes are available on my web store, you can just send me an email. It's Kyle Martin Fine Art, and I will add you to my email newsletter. So last year I made a, a huge vlog about all the things that I had to do to get ready to announce my holiday boxes and I talked all about designing the cards in Adobe Illustrator and getting the stickers made and I unboxed the cards when they came in and I'll put a link to that video in the description of, of this video. Last year the holiday boxes had a twilight theme. Most all of the paintings that I shared last year in my holiday boxes were scenes of sunsets that I painted right out here on the farm from my driveway. We were having a beautiful November last year and it was really warm and atmospheric days and it made for some beautiful sunsets. Well this year it's been a lot colder, it's been very chilly. I just came in from painting a sunset and I'll tell you it was in the 20s outside as I was painting. A lot cloudier this year. I had some different effects. I created several sunset paintings that are going to be available in the holiday boxes but I also did a bunch of paintings up here in the studio. So this week I think I'll share a painting or two that was created up here in the studio and I'll also share probably one that I created outside. I'm sure I'll give a little bit of a voiceover in each of the paintings and one thing that I want to touch on is the ways that I use photo reference when I'm in the studio. I paint so much outdoors and, and I feel like I have a great method for simplifying the landscape when I am working on location and I've kind of found a way in the studio to simplify my reference material in the same way that I do outside. For some reason, those of us who paint from life a lot, we always enjoy painting from life. And it's not that painting from photographs is bad, it's just that it's, it's a different challenge. And for every different challenge, there's different ways of doing things. My way isn't always the right way, but it is a way that I found that has worked for me. And so those are some of the things that we're gonna share in today's video. I'm excited that you're here with me, as always. It's so nice to have you here. It's so nice to read your comments below. And as we move into the winter time, we're gonna keep the plein air videos coming. We'll have some more studio painting videos and we're gonna have a lot more fun right here on the channel. All right, let's get right into it. Let's head up into the studio. Let's check out some small paintings. Let's check out the way that I use photo reference when I'm in the studio, making some paintings and pretending I'm outside painting because it's always a lot more fun being outside and painting, at least on those nice days. All right, let's get right into it. We're back in the secret studio today. Back again, of course, with Boy Kitty. This is Hess's favorite cat. Hess, if you're seeing this, come take care of your cat. We're going to be working on another little 6x8 painting today. I wanted to go through my source material for today. We're going to be working on a painting of the neighbor's sheds here and one of their cows that they had over there at the time that I shot the photograph. So this was shot late in the day, probably around this time of year, and there was some nice light happening in this painting. There just happened to be this, this cow standing right in front of the barn and the old sheds and I thought it made kind of an interesting image and it's something that I want to explore in today's studio session. To the left right now we have just a black and white version and then we have the color version to the right. Next to that 
I did posterize the image in Photoshop just so I could get a clearer idea of the shapes and some of the, look at this. <laughs> the cat literally climbed up me to get onto the camera today. So um, I'm just standing here and there's a cat climbing on me. So I have a posterized version. That's, ow. That's kind of a, a nice simplification. And then the final image that I have on the projector screen right now is the image that I made in Notanizer. And, and that just really broke things down into shapes of value for me. So when I'm working from photo reference, I very seldomly just rely on the color image alone. I love to break it down in a few different ways. It enables me to see the shapes more easily. When I'm in the landscape and I'm working from life, I'm just able to squint my eyes and break things down naturally. But in the studio, we'll pull out all the technology and we'll do a lot of different things to get our image reference going uh, in the way that we want. I will say that the images today are very pixelated. Uh, this is just a screenshot off my cell phone. So not even great high quality, high resolution images. I think bad photos are almost better to work from anyway so let's get right into things today we'll start to work on today's little six by eight inch painting the first step in the painting process on this morning was to create a site size drawing of the posterized version of the subject matter on paper i then transferred the drawing onto the canvas using a sheet of serial transfer paper and here I am going in with ultramarine blue paint and filling in all of the dark shapes. You can see I've moved the photo reference over and I'm using the no tanizer version at this point. This is the painting so far and I used ultramarine blue oil paint thinned with solvent just kind of filling in the dark spaces. I'm at a point where all I have to do now is put the right colors in the right place and I'll probably end up keeping this very hard edged and very simple, but again, simple done well is what I'm always after. So let's mix up some colors and let's see where it takes us. Starting in here, working on the palette. On this morning, I seem to be mixing my colors a little bit more neutral at the start. I'm holding up that piece of paper and the reason I'm doing that is I'm actually isolating colors. I'm looking through a small hole that I've punched in that piece of paper, and I was isolating the colors that I was seeing on my photo reference and mixing them to the exact temperature that I wanted them to be. Well, with all that work of composing the photo reference and all that attention paid to mixing up the colors and the exact hue and temperature and value that I wanted, uh, actually putting the paint onto the painting surface goes rather quickly. And you can see I have a good start here in only a few minutes. Here it is, a lot of shapes. I don't want to disturb these shapes too much, but I do want to take it a little bit further. And I'm going to go back in and rework some of the areas. Overall, I think it's in a good place. It only took a half hour to get all of the paint onto the canvas, so I spend most of my time designing the paintings doing the drawings, mixing the colors, and then when it comes time to actually paint, I'm able to work very quickly because painting to me is more about the decision making that you're doing rather than the actual applying the paint. So let's keep it moving. Just continuing to refine this painting and you can see I'm holding my cell phone up to my face and I'm not taking a phone call if you remember from a couple months back, I made a video on how I use technology to make better paintings. And I'm actually using my cell phone as a mirror. And I'm observing my painting backwards in that mirror. I'm kind of darting my eyes from the painting over to the photo reference. 
and by viewing it backwards and shifting my gaze from the painting to the photo reference, I'm able to see areas that need to be refined and I'm able to see the accuracy of my drawing and of the shapes and of the colors and it's a very helpful tool to use. Well, this is where I've taken the painting. I, I really relied on the blue, the ultramarine blue, to create some of those darker accents and I happen to be a fan of ultramarine blue paint and for today's little painting I think that it worked out. I can see one thing that I'm going to do uh, to fix it up. I'm just going to add one more little accent underneath the hind legs of the cow. About an hour and a half or two hours of total painting time up here in the studio today. Again, maybe one hour of preparing all of my reference material and getting things ready and then an hour of actual painting time. Thanks so much for sticking with me. We'll be back with more uh, coming up soon. Hey, welcome back for another evening of plein air painting. Um, today we have a lot of wind and it's actually kind of cold out this evening. So I decided to just pull my car over here I can kind of use my car as a wind blocker and I'm going to be painting a couple of versions of the sun setting behind me. There's clouds in the sky kind of obscuring the sun and as that sun lowers and dips in the sky I think I'm going to find some interesting colors so I'm just going to work on a couple of panels this evening and we're just on the quest to get some good 6 by 8s done. It's a beautiful evening, it's Friday, the work day is done. That's reason to celebrate enough and we're going to do a little plein air painting. All right, let's get the party started. Let's mix some colors. I'm mixing up variations of warm and cool colors. Usually when I'm outdoors painting, I start by mixing the lighter value colors, and then I work towards the darker colors. In today's case, the lighter colors happen to be the sun in the sky and some of the light bits of the clouds. And then the darker colors are the backlit shadow, violet and green clouds and of course that dark tree line and round plains. That light just kept getting better during this painting session and so I took the first painting off of the easel and I started a second one. I kind of love these shots where I'm just holding the GoPro mixing the colors. That's kind of how it feels when you're outside painting. Everything is happening and in front of your eyes and you're just reacting to it, trying to get your emotions and your feelings about the scene onto the painting surface as quickly as possible. Well, that's gonna wrap up the painting and that's also gonna wrap up this week's video. Thanks for being here for this week's upload. I really appreciate having you all here. Why not leave something in the comments below? Of course, if you'd like and if you have time, let me know if you're enjoying these videos or you could also leave me an email, kylemartinfineart at gmail.com. And hey, we'll pick it up next week. We'll have our holiday boxes for 2021. Wow, I'm losing my voice right now. <laughs>